your expectation now is better results. Uh, I'm going to see breakthrough workouts every day. I'm going to see at least or one every week. I'm going to I'm going to race a ton. I'm going to see personal records every single time I go out and race. But then when you, once you get to a point, your body either gets used to things, your life changes, your circumstances change, your body gets used to certain stimulus, all the kind of things happen. And I think what gets lost in all of it is that excitement of discovery. Thursday morning, my buddy. Thursday morning, my buddy. How are you, buddy? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Yeah. Good. Well, I say I'm great, but I, I'm in a I'm kind of I'm a little bit grumpy this morning. Oh, good. I was kind of. Lying. I'm a little. Grumpy are you? Too. Are you? Are you <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really grumpy. You know, we've been doing uh, a lot of work on our backyard, and uh, we got our sod laid down yesterday, and I'm like, all right, everything's done. You know, it's not like it. I'm almost set. All I gotta do is finish the fire pit, throw a few more stones down, be all done, and I'm gonna take care of that. We had some people and in, in do the side yesterday, and then I got the friendly reminder that two, two things. One, it's definitely not fall. It is still like 95 degrees. I think here in Chattanooga, they're talking about like Friday or tomorrow is supposed to be record-breaking temps, 95 for this time oh. of year records are and nice. then i got a friendly reminder from the uh sod installation guy that you should water your lawn vigorously for the next three weeks yeah it's like a job in of itself oh and i've i've, I've skipped going to the pool this week because i've gotten i think plenty wet just from adjusting the sprinkler readjusting the sprinkler you know full range of motion making sure i'm, I'm optimizing all the water no wasted spots not getting to my neighbor's yard not being you know uh, spraying their stuff so and here you get charged for your water plus it like doubles when it comes to like your sewage so yeah um we'll be taking donations at the end of this podcast for the robbie's backyard fund um <laughs> to finish uh no no I'm kidding but it's it's good it, it is it's a job in of itself but uh you'll see the um fruits of our labor here later this evening when you yes, i will make the up with maddie that reminds me of when i used to have an outdoor pool man or an above ground pool i remember those days the water bills were extensive for those yes. things, <laughs> especially when it leaked oh yeah well that's, <laughs> that's never good for anything but uh we'll pass we'll we'll skip any further conversation about the uh watering lawn situation in my house but welcome crushing iron podcast episode 306 306 306 we cover all things triathlon life race recaps race previews uh guests here and there and, and but for the most part we we just try to do our best to um have good conversations that are things on top of our minds and uh a lot of times on top of the athletes minds that we work with or athletes amongst our team and, and that really does i think we um you don't probably mention that enough is that you know uh during our first few months of doing this uh we kind of got i remember this one review that we got that was talking about us running out of topics and how are we ever going to survive doing more podcasts and that was like episode like 30 and here we are 300 plus later but the the ability for us to churn out these podcasts is is not just i think a reflection of you and i's most consistent endeavor in in, in any time of our life <laughs> doing this twice a week for three years but yep. The fact that we we're continuing in the sport, you know, we're both. Uh, I've been coaching for a long time, and as and, and as an athlete, you've been an athlete for a long time, and you're coaching this year. And then, you know, so we have all those experiences. So we're continuously going through that that discovery and that growth and the the ebbs and flows of what that entails in our day to day life. But then also, um, our team, you know, the athletes that we work with and the community that they have created and the culture that they've created amongst themselves um, that also through conversations that we have with them and then in our closed active athlete group and then even the ones that we kind of have back and forth in our podcast community group which is crushing iron group you can search it on facebook if you want to be a part of that but that is that's like endless information you know it's, it's endless topics and things that that come up and and i just think it's uh i think we'd be remiss for not you know thanking everyone that's part of the community and then obviously our athletes as well because that's that's where a lot of our thoughts come from and, and critical thinking and discovery and growth and things that we can share um 
and learn from them, we can now hopefully put out into, uh, you know, on the interwebs and in podcast universe for you to consume and hopefully take something uh, good away from it. Yeah. And there, there's inspiration there too for us. We just keep, you know, because it's ma- this sport is amazing. And when people kind of stay in it and keep looking for answers and keep pushing on and it's, you know, it's just, that it is that metaphor for life to me, man. It's just like I love being around people that have that kind of attitude, you know, because everything isn't easy, you know, and like things get tough, you know. You got to get out and water your lawn and worry about the <laughs> That's right. in the heat. Life's rough, baby. Life is rough. But you just keep coming back, man, and keep trying to figure back, it man. out, and don't throw in the towel. And that's kind of a big part of things, I think. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people come into this sport and. And you know, gung ho, and then realize how tough it can be, and to the consistency of it. And you know, the same with our podcast. We just keep bringing it. You know, I get up Monday and Thursday and be like, "Man, we're going again, again, going again. again." It's like to try and think about doing another three hundred of these is a little bit daunting. But you just got to take it one time at a time. Yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not, yeah, three hundred. Let's, let's not get that far. But man, you um, know. Yeah, and I just, uh, I'm sure a lot of people know, obviously, that listen all the time, but in case you're kind of new, I just finished Iron Man Wisconsin. I am an older man in my 50s <laughs> who started <laughs> this podcast or this uh, triathlon journey late in life. So, yeah, I do like working with uh, kind of newcomers and uh, older athletes and stuff like that. And what I'm figuring out, and I think you always kind of figure it out, but. I'm a little fatigued now. It's a, it's been delayed. How do you get delay onset? Delayed onset fatigue or something for me mm-hmm. from uh, my last Ironman race, and I think a lot of that was because I felt really good coming off it, and then I was like, you know, I'm gonna keep this going and push it on, and then I pushed for a while, and it's like your body gets used to like at a cellular level motion. Mm-hmm. and getting up and going and pushing and be like man I don't feel like this today but then you'd start doing it and then your body's like yeah alright this is where we're at and now as I slow down I think my body start you know wanting to keep moving but it's tired it's a weird place I, th- I think it's it's a good topic um, and a, a couple I have a couple other ones I wanted to, to talk over today and obviously you and I are I'm in Chattanooga right now I live here I live I don't know I could I think I could run from our house and be on the Ironman run course in about two and a half miles I think from door to door to course uh, so we're here in Chattanooga Mike's coming up later today so we'll be here we'll be uh, we'll be out and about we don't have a tent or a booth or anything um, but we will be out and about we'll be around Friday I, I keep forgetting like it's happening here in town it's our, it's our first experience in being in Chattanooga with the race here and it's kind of interesting like Allie was on the w- our way into the office this morning she was like what's all this traffic and I was like I think they're probably already blocking stuff off for you know that Iron Man uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, cause like, like damn I know it's what <laughs> not, not that you're local <laughs> I know right it's like, but athlete check in is, is today I think and um, it's just but it's, it's fun and exciting but um, so we'll be here so if you see us please you know say hi we'll be around um, say hello be happy to talk to anybody and offer any last minute tips that we can and uh, maybe do a, I might do a short course preview after but we've already I think done one last year I know for sure um, so we can go back off look at the archives and see what that race uh, preview uh, podcast was but I think something that you touched on it is I think you know a lot of athletes are going through that right now and I think part of the fatigue is it's it's got a bunch of different levels to it and so i think one of the biggest things that athletes tend to forget is you don't just need to recover from such a huge race you also need to recover from all of the training before it like if you look back throughout your entire you know your entire year you for the yes you tapered into your race you think oh i should be fresh but yeah you're not you can't shed it all you just can't and it takes weeks and weeks. And I, I generally believe that it takes about a month to even feel remotely good again. And that's, and that's not even taking into account the different aspects of triathlon, which is mental, emotional, and physical. You know, and how, did, how did your race go? That plays into it. Did your race go great? So are you chomping it in? And so are you, did your race go great? And then so your first thing is, all right, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of time off, and i got to capitalize on this, and i gotta, I got to use this as a kind of a springboard opportunity to throw myself into next year. And there's, you know, time to grind, baby. Be yesterday. Let's just get back to work. 
and then you end up falling flat because you don't allow your body and we I think we touched on this last week I believe but you have to be able to allow your body to go through those ebbs and flows of building a huge fitness, building a lot of fatigue, and then shedding it on race day and only kind of getting that one or two uh, opportunities to burn your matches each year. And then – so you, ha- you just have to rest. You have to give your body a chance to repair. Having said that, once you get into – and this is kind of the um, – it's kind of the taper – the phantom taper pains multiplied by 10 – you know, when your body, when you're going through a taper, everyone has these like phantom made, phantom pains because your body's starting to repair itself. Uh, you're not you're not exercising as much, you're not training as much, so you you'll have these like you know niggles and things that have popped up out of nowhere. You haven't had problems with all year, and you will sometimes also also feel kind of sluggish because you're getting out of your routine. You're not exercising as much, and uh, you go post Ironman or post seventy point three or any kind of big race, and your body is just like it's shutting down it's like it's time to park the car in the garage it's time to let it get cold over the winter and i just i want to be left alone if you try to start me up it's going to take like five or six cranks on the starter and a couple engine pops to get me rolling uh and it's just i think it's just it's an interesting phenomenon really to feel so out of shape that athletes they express this like three weeks so they I'm just I can't believe how out of shape I am already. I'm like, dude, you're not out of shape. Like fitness doesn't disappear that quickly. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't. And you just forget that you did some this insane event. But it is, it's tough. I've got I have an athlete that did Wisconsin that did well, um, but there are some things that we kinda needed to I think fine tune uh, in our in our opinion as we kind of collectively chatted uh post race uh, and it was it was really just based around nutrition uh none of it was from the prep none of it was from the fitness it was just uh, nutrition execution mm-hmm. uh and this athlete kind of mentioned like hey you know i think i'd like to do chattanooga so that's a three-week turnaround and so navigating that has been interesting as well as a coach because i've never worked with an athlete that's done two back-to-back Ironman's like this three weeks apart and just c- trying to find that that happy place in between of we still need to recover we still need to stay a little bit sharp we also need to remind ourselves that we're not getting slower you know that we're not like losing fitness that on the flip side and this is something else that that you should remember and everyone else should remember was that the Ironman you just did was also a huge fitness boost like you just did something you you know some people have never done in their entire lives and you or no matter what if you had done it before the last time you did one was probably months and months and months so you'd never done like a 10 12 hour 14 hour training day um, which is itself a fitness boost if you recover and so i think that it's it is it, it's a delicate time but i think it's it's a it's a time of year that you have to nurture um, and accept and be understanding of your body and i also i think that when your mind and your and your mental and emotional kind of mood is so distanced from anything immediate in terms of a new race, I think that contributes to the the uh, lethargic feeling. Sure. You know, in terms of sense. it, just it's, I think I think excitement is is a huge part of it. it. It allows you to, I mean, let's be honest, excitement and ego allow us to make decisions we would never make, both good and absolutely terrible. Yeah. And and push through things that we normally wouldn't. So I think I think it's common, and I think it's not something that people should beat themselves up about. I think you should accept it. I think you should understand that that it's part of it. Um, but I think that just moving in general, and you've always been a big proponent of this yourself, is just sometimes even if it's even if you like just taking a day off and that is rest. Like sometimes just getting out and moving is the absolute best thing for you. Especially like I think part of it is also is athletes now go from being outside a lot to now being inside a ton. And I think that has a tremendous effect um, from not being outside in the sunshine and nature, just being outdoors in general is, is really, really good for your mood and your overall well being. And so you remove all these positives and these exciting things and these goals and these big, huge life events. And now you become like, you know, all of a sudden you like flip things into like a lazy hermit. And you want, and you and you want to and you want to understand like why your mood isn't as chipper or as happy or as motivated as it was before, and and those are all you know huge contributing factors. Yeah, man, I was just talking to someone about that last night who's doing Louisville, and you know they were like, yeah, well, uh, you know, we went and grabbed dinner, and they had to get up at 
they had to leave early and they're like, I gotta get up at, you know, 4.30 and do my you know, hour run or whatever. I was like, good luck, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, there, it, there is something to be said for that. As I was getting closer to Ironman Wisconsin, it is like a, you know, you're kind of like, well, there's a uh, switch that flips and you're like, I gotta go. I gotta go do this or I'm gonna get embarrassed out there. I mean, there's a definite race motivator. But as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, post race is almost like reverse taper and you have to like wind it down it's almost mm-hmm. like and, and it's funny that i know that probably 90 percent of people when they see uh run workouts or bike workouts or swim workouts and they see warm down or cool down don't probably execute that like they should maybe um and in a big sense coming off an Ironman is you have to cool down you have to warm down and that's probably the biggest you know example of it and this really explains to me why it's sort of like your body like you're saying you're so used to going it's the biggest training day you've probably ever had or close to it and then suddenly you're gonna just not do anything Mm -hmm. and your body's like wait a minute what is going on it's like total confusion so you almost have to just slowly come back down from what you were doing and get back into a maybe a manageable kind of quote-unquote normal sort of training cycle again rather than that big block or the build that build going into iron man it's not natural to be doing all that stuff all the time but you have to come back sort of through that in a way after you've went way up to the top you can't just you know jump off the cliff and come back down to zero it's probably a good idea to keep the moving and sort of find your baseline again it's a it's a great time of year for a psychology shift. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in, in in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, it's it's an interesting time of year too. I mean, there's let's be honest, there's never an interest. There's never a dull time of year as a coach. Um, you know, I could wake up on a Monday morning and like go through training peaks, and I'll have one athlete be like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to try barefoot running this week," and <laughs> yeah. another one's like, "I think I'm going to pick up CrossFit." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, sweet. Now let's talk about that for a minute." Um, but well, so that's I, a good point. I mean, I mean, it's like, why does that happen? Too, I want to know. Uh, I, well, it's impatience, and it's just, it's just looking for. It's I think some of it's boredom, uh, but which is a, a lot of times just a lack of a lack of patience. Um, which isn't which isn't terrible but anyway, but I think in terms of like the uh, the psychology behind that, I had a, a conversation yesterday with an athlete who I've worked with. This is going to be our third year working together, and and we've been very very successful at all of the run events and all the seventy point threes. We PR every single one. Ironman has been there's been three different ones, and they've all been kind of three totally different. Uh, results. Wisconsin, the first year we were together, was a was a PR. This last year we did Chattanooga, and that was uh, no swim, and so kind of a hard day to here in Chattanooga. It's sort of a hard day to gauge, and then like Placid, uh, which which didn't go very well. And so we we're kind of discussing, you know, like uh, the future of where we're going to go, how we're going to get there, what went right, what went wrong, and as we, I think some, a trap that we all get. <sighs> And I think I think losing weight is another one that I think we get captured in because it's it's numbers based, you know. It, it's and it's something that can also you can lose weight really really quick uh, if you're if you have a lot to lose, you know. Like if you have 50 pounds to lose and you really focus on your diet and you go all in, you can probably shed a good amount of that in a couple of months with just a few minor tweaks. But then as you get and we I think we discussed this this to some extent last week in some different kind of analogy was that but once it's time to shed those last five pounds well then it's like now things get tough now your margin for error is slimmer and so you tend to judge yourself almost daily because you've had so 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 much success losing weight that the frustration builds and the expectations rise because you should be able to do it and you just can't and so then you get frustrated, and then you want to just, you know, throw everything with the kitchen sink at it and try every new fad and seven-minute abs and twenty-minute hit workouts that are going to be the new, you know, the new greatest thing. And I'm going to go sit in a cryotherapy cha- chamber for ninety-eight, you know, uh, minutes a day, and that's perfect for me because if I'm not going to lose weight from doing that, I'm going to lose weight because I'm going to get frostbite and lose two feet, and there goes my other seven pounds. But fitness-wise, when you see so many gains quickly. When you improve so much quickly, 
then that becomes your expectation. Your expectation now is constant, uh, perfect, not not perfect, but constant, um, consumable meetings of expectations and better results. Uh, I'm going to see breakthrough workouts every day. I'm going to see at least or one every week. I'm going to I'm going to race a ton. I'm going to see CPRs almost ever or C- CPRs. I'm going to see <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see personal records every single time I go out and race. But then when you, once you get to a point, your body either gets used to things, your life changes, your circumstances change, your body gets used to a certain stimulus, all these kind of things happen. And I think what gets lost in all of it, and this is kind of how we wrapped up our conversation yesterday, was what, was what gets lost in all of it is that excitement of discovery. And I think one of the things that every athlete should focus on, especially this time of year, when you have to revert back to total unbiased, bought-in, process-oriented belief and thinking because your biggest race is so far away and you just came from such a high or maybe even a low uh, at a race that had captured your your conscience that had captured every every thought you had ever that you would have the last six months it was the it was the subject and the star of every Facebook post and every Instagram uh, shot that you took and it was all about that and, and and you've you've worn and reworn your finisher shirt every day since then and then now it becomes like I don't want to say a loss of identity, but there is now this gaping hole. And one of the greatest ways you can fill it, I think, and I truly believe this in this time of year, is with a kind of reinstilled belief and feeling energized from discovery. And what I mean from discovery is like discovering new things about yourself as an athlete and what works and what doesn't work and looking at things in a in a broader picture from because athletes do this all the time and i think this is a huge trap and it's obviously an an impediment to progress is that they only want to live three to six months at a time and they're willing to take shortcuts they're willing to uh, short take shortcuts on specific training cycles just for the sake of trying to to eke out a few seconds or maybe even a couple minutes at this specific race, I'm going to be three months out versus gaining 30 to 45 minutes on a race later down the road because they are impatient and want to cut the cycle short. But so what I'm trying to get to is like, it's a great time of year to get back to process oriented, oriented process uh, oriented thinking and just being excited to learn again, to learn about your body, to try new training, not different training methods, but different training cycles and to understand where you're going. And I think it's a great way to stay excited and engaged while also removing expectations. Uh, I just, I cannot urge you enough, no matter what time of year you're in, whether it's you're about to hit your peak time of year or you're about, to, or you're embarking on, you know, uh, late season or early season training for next year is just stop having so many damn expectations about every single workout that you do and then judging them like it's the definition of who you are as an athlete like the athletes that I know that are that have the most success and that that deal with the least amount of burnout and the least amount of of kind of bad attitudes and, and bad you know bad spots here and there in the course of training and the ones that are the most successful in terms of developing their full potential are the ones who do their workouts and are, and are first and foremost incredibly satisfied just by doing the work and then after that they just let the they just let the rest go it is what it is. Not every day is a judgment. I mean, it's it's absolutely. Um, it just ha- it just it's it's a negative. Uh, it, it has negative impact on your performance to judge every single day against like it's apples to apples to apples. Uh, and it just I, I think it's this time of year again, and people start to do that more because that's what is on their mind because they don't have anything else to reach for. And I think it's, it's a, it's a delicate time of year where you can either start to create good habits in training, or you can have other bad habits resurge and dominate your thinking. And oftentimes really put you in a dark place in what's already going to be a darker time of year, which is fall and winter. Mm. Man, that is so huge. It's so difficult, man. You, you look at any kind of project that you want to go into or any kind of goal, 
and it's a long-term goal and we all have this kind of premature optimization in our heads about how we're gonna how we're gonna do it and how we're gonna do it well and when you start the process on day one or day week one of 50 weeks or whatever it is to have that answer in your head already is almost impossible because it's like anything it's like you just got to show up over time and if we would have sat you know three years ago and said hey on our 300 podcast i really want to make that about blah 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 it would have driven us crazy you know if we were only on podcast 10 Mm -hmm. trying to think about podcast 300 and that's so natural to say yeah i want to knock that out of the park and i think in the terms of our growth we did knock that out of the park but we had no thought about it until like maybe the week of but we had taken 299 steps in that direction to get to that point and it always because you know it's that discovery thing that is so interesting because it does for me it's always a discovery every time we get on a podcast it's like wait the excitement of what's going to happen and there is something to be said for that of not over planning and, and over expecting because I think what you said about that is huge to stop expecting every day to be something important as far as your you know or noticeable as far as your workout improvements how do we do that I mean what a what a pressure to put on ourselves every day to wake up and think today is going to be that day when we just crush it and then it's not and it's like man well tomorrow will be that day and you keep going through that cycle but if you just keep kind of showing up and and doing the little things in the right direction, that's how it works. But it's hard to really see that, you know? It, it all, I think it stems from, uh, and again, like this comes, this I think also boils down to what your um, process of thinking or excitement or focus was on before your big day. If it was, I'm searching for, because um, I we had our friends that were in town uh, this last week, I went on a run with with Kara and a two hour long run, and um, we were just chit chatting about um, she has a marathon coming up, and um, she is significantly, and I don't mean this in a bad way because she knows I love her, but we were doing like I think we ended up averaging like twelve forty five minute miles, um, which was. I'm definitely out of shape, but that's a little bit sore than I'm used to running. But we so just were running and chatting, and she was talking to me about her development as an athlete and, and trying to do this this marathon for the first time. Uh, and she was talking about about what happens when it's over, and you know how does it feel? And she was like, you know, how do you go from like like why are you okay running you know this pace with me when you should be running like a lot faster? Because she was like, she was almost like, I don't, you know, you don't yeah. want to run with me. I'm too slow. Yeah. I was like, first of all, I'm still getting a bit fitness benefit out of this. <laughs> like, you know, so it's not totally like me being some incredible running servant. Like I'm still getting, I'm still getting a fitness benefit. It's not hurting me. You know, and again, like that's just something like people can't wrap their minds around. It's just like, I still got a fitness boost from, from being on my feet for two, two, uh, a little over two hours and like I think it was two hours and five minutes. We did like ten miles. I still got a fitness boost from that. But anyway, and a so mental talk- recalibration of sorts. I think that we have a lot of us get into this thing where you don't realize that that's a that's almost like a patience benefit or something. To you know what I mean? Well, it just it just reminds you that that there's so much to be gained mm-hmm. by just the mere fact of doing. And I was telling her, I said, it's just, it's one of those things where like, I just, I, I'm happy with the effort. You know, I, I texted an athlete earlier or late last night and I said, said, do your best and leave the rest. And so many athletes judge and assume what their best is going to be in a workout. If they don't meet that, then everything else is terrible. And it's just, it's not going to be there. And that, that, that goal of, of almost hollow fulfillment does nothing for you. It does nothing zero but basically capture your inability to not let your ego control basically two seconds of a stimulus that met its expectation versus enjoying yourself knowing that what you're doing is working but just the fact that i don't have to see a result right now nor do i have to go out and prove to myself that i can run faster the next day i know what i I know what i need to do i know why i need to do it and that's all i need to know because 
it's it is working. I've seen it work. I just don't have to have this glaring 18 page, you know, thesis of a paper that's all data proving to me that you know what, Robbie, you got faster today. Like that's not what what brings me joy. None of it does. Now, that, I don't know how that could give anybody joy, honestly, but I'm sure it does someone. It's just like I know that it's doing good, and I think also times we we forget, and I think this is also like this time of year is so great to get outside and be flexible with your schedule and get on your mountain bike, go for go for gravel bike rides, hop on the run trails, remind yourself of why this stuff that we do is so good, and it's so good for us. Uh, to just in, be outside and enjoy things and what it does for our body and for our mind and for our attitude and for our emotions. Like, I don't know a single person that has ever left for a run or a bike ride and came back in a worse mood. Uh, it, like if you're leaving in a bad mood, you're like, I guess we can go for a run. You come back, like, if for some reason you're just happier. Like you just you you everything is different. You're because you get enjoyment out of it. And if you if you go out for every single run and you're so paralyzed by meeting these expectations or meeting this average pace, not only are you going to miss out on so many opportunities for growth and self discovery and just flat out enjoyment <laughs> that complements yourself and your well being, is you're going to start cheating yourself. In your and your actual athletic development by sh- taking shortcuts to ensure that you're going to meet those, because people think meeting expectations are a good thing, but when you pull them out of thin air, or you or you generate them because you only need a win for the day for some odd reason, just because you're having a rough day, so you take the flattest route possible and it's almost downhill, and you cut your run 30 minutes short because you couldn't hold the pace that you were thought you were supposed to hold or that your coach told you you should hold that day, you stop short. Very few athletes will finish it out. And same goes for the bike ride. I don't want to take a hilly ride cuz cuz what about my miles per hour? I'm like dude, who cares? My god. It's just it's just it's a again like if it ever does get to fall uh, yeah, right. Like right now, it's like I keep I was, saying, it's like the fourth week in a row. I'm like, yeah, so fall right around the corner. Or in like athletes' comments, I'm like, just wait, just wait. More fitness is going to show as soon as these tips go from like 95 to 70 and the dew point drops. And I've been saying that for like the last month. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it ain't happening. Uh, yeah. So when that happens, we're going to all start feeling better. Uh, well, they're, you're definitely. I mean, so, well, yeah. some people are. I know you West Coasters are. Um, I had a couple of comments and train peaks from the West Coasters that were like, "I'm loving this seasonal EPO," because uh, you go from like it goes from like 90 to 95, and I think a lot of athletes that, that go race in in warmer climates and go race in cool climates is such a huge benefit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it, going back to what I was saying about just getting out and and enjoying what you what you enjoy and reminding yourself of why you got into it in the first place. And I think. I think people, I think people lose that, this, lose sight of that in every aspect of life. They lose sight of it in their relationships. They lose sight of, they lose sight of it with themselves personally. They lose sight of it in business. They lose sight of it in everything. That, that you kind of forget where you came from and how a how far you've come and b how you got there. That if you had to look back on your journey, like you, you specifically, if you had to look back on your journey and think, man. You know what, man? I knew I was changing it as an athlete. Back here on this Tuesday in October of 2016, I went out and did this like hill repeat run, and boy, I smashed it. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was here, baby. I, no. You look back on the years, and then you remember the experiences. Sometimes they're by yourself. Sometimes they're with other people. And almost every single time, they are void of what your watch told you. It was that you overcame an obstacle, that you worked out when you didn't want to, that you you ran in the rain, that you biked with friends, that you rode up these mountains you never thought you could. Like that's what stuff that you remember. And along the way, that's how you got to who you are now. The same goes for like business. Like you 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 know, you're, if you're growing a business and I think sometimes you and I forget this is like you know, we've we feel like we're never doing enough and we kinda of look back to where we were three years ago and think, Okay, yeah, we've done okay. Like we're, we're we're helping people, and this is exactly what we want to. We're three hundred podcasts in, and we're doing great. Um, we're helping athletes, and that's what we want to do. That's all that matters. Um, and you know, like same with me. Like if I had to look back and think, you know, I'll be 
uh, six years sober in November, and people ask like, you know, how did you, how did you know? I'm like, I have no idea. Mm. I have no like, I, I honestly have zero clue how I got here. Uh, I mean, I do, but it wasn't like this shocking moment, you know, that just like was right. like the, like I woke up and I was like, this is it. That wasn't me. And I just know it's taken like well, I've worked every single day, and then I still work hard. It's not as difficult as it used to be. Um, by any stretch but yeah. it's t- honestly like sometimes I forget it and I think that's the point like sometimes I forget like I, I one of the guys yesterday that was helping with our sod he was like hey you know it's like I've just he was like I used to be an alcoholic as like two years ago and I'm still trying to get my feelings like oh I'll be I'll be you know I'm, it'll be six years in November and I sometimes I forget it that and which is I'm not saying that in like a negative way. That's kind of like frowned upon. I think in AA that I forget it. But sometimes because I, I don't I don't crave alcohol. I don't want to drink. Like that's never an issue for me. But I've also worked so hard and lived like this for for what to me like feels like so long. Is that sometimes you forget? I think the bad times too that got you here, and that it was never like this this one moment or this one workout or this one, you know, uh, business decision or this one date of your relationship. It was like all, it was, it's cumulative. It's cumulative experience and action and reaction and decisions that you make. And if you can't be happy doing it, then don't do it. And I just think that it's a good reminder for us all to look back and appreciate things and get back to, it's just a great time of year to get back to your roots, get back to your roots get back to what got you remind yourself of what was fun and don't be so so paralyzed with performance that may or may not happen 10 months from now um because more than likely you're going to impede that progress by by focusing on all the things that that create no value in your life yeah yeah i mean i was talking to somebody uh, a friend of mine who's a therapist the other night and we were talking about you know the, the ways to go through that kind of stuff and one is to dig back in and kind of figure out what you know, the past and sort of things that went on in your life and kind of reconcile and come to terms with everything and understand it and then the second method is to go forward and what you were saying there just really kind of stuck in my head about that so sort of like instead of laboring in things that you've done in the past or struggles or peace you know stuff that kind of brings you down or you, you're like man, I wish I could have done this different. It's like, who are you going to be now and where are you going to move next? And I think there's a lot of parallels there between finishing a race, your big A race of the year, and it's sort of like you can only reflect on that so much and look at things, but it's like, hey, look, what are we going to do now to find that new me or that comfortable place in who I am right now and and just Mm -hmm. be excited about that because like what you're saying about how you forget that sometimes that you're in AA or you're sober I think that's a great thing because it's like you're just sort of moving into this new place and you're finding new joys and everything like that it's not like you quote unquote totally forget it it's not brainwashed out of your head it's just that you're choosing not to labor in the past with things as much yeah that's a that's a much better way of, of saying it as you're usually good at. Um, it, but I guess maybe a better analogy is like is Ali and I, <laughs> Ali and I like five years. We had this book that we that her sister got us that's uh, like five years old, and every day we write something in it, and then it also has this list of like you know bucket list things that we want or that we want to go. And we did it like five years ago, and we dug it out the other day, and without even like because we haven't been like staring at every day but without knowing it really we had accomplished like half of them already just not not because we went through and checked one off one by one but they just materialized because of what we've been doing and the way we've been working and the decisions that we made that we've just kind of ended up here um instead of thinking all right now tomorrow the next thing i've got to do is i've got to go you know find a house the back deck it's always been like a dream. I just want a house with a back deck that I can sit on and enjoy life and enjoy nature, and now we have that. But I don't even I don't even remember that I wrote that down, and nor that I like spend every day obsessing about it. I just now we just it's just here, um, and I think that that's just it, it's. I just think it's again like no matter what time of year it is, honestly, <laughs> I think it's a good reminder. I say like this time of year, but it's it's a great reminder every time of year 
to to enjoy things and i think you know it kind of last thing on that is that you know it's okay to change you know i think that i think that we we marry ourselves to who we are when we start this sport and we are so desperate through the bad and the ugly and through denial or through whatever to just let go of that person that we thought we were or we want to accomplish what we started to accomplish or and understanding that there's like absolutely I don't know anything wrong with that you know like I, I work with athletes that that when we started working together they were totally single now they're married with a kid living in a different state with a different job hello that's a little bit that's kind of a life change mm-hmm. uh, and so you have to shift yeah and I don't want to say goals are a shift, or because in a negative way, so I think some people think, "Well, you should never give up on your goals." Well, honestly, yeah, you should. If those goals don't make sense, will make you happy in life. And I think that, like, I just think it's one of those things where, where you should be, you should always do what makes you happy. And even if it's a goal that you set out you know a long time ago to do and things are different now and you haven't achieved it if what if it doesn't make you happy anymore then bag it or move on or or shift the goal um because you're not you're not now the same person who made that goal five years ago you know now if your life circumstances haven't changed you're you're the same exact person you know you're single same job same hours no kids no nothing everything's the exact same you're still driven every, you know you, your personality hasn't changed and you know by all means keep going but i just think that i think it's a i think it's a healthy conversation to have for yourself and it's also i think well this time of year is difficult for people because they they start to kind of reshape what they originally thought their goals were either from this year projecting themselves into next year or why they got into the sport and what their original goal was. Uh, and I think that you should always reevaluate what makes you happy, who makes you happy, the things that make you happy and incorporate as many of those things in your life as possible. Um, because those are the things that are going to enrich you as a person, as an athlete, as a friend, um, and those are the things, obviously, that, that will bring you continued success in, in all your endeavors, both on and off the course. Yeah, and when you, I think a lot of people want to make drastic change too, and it's hard to recognize that subtle change that's coming on. Mm-hmm. You know, as we go, it's sort of like we have this goal for the race for or whatever, and and then we realize in training that something like we're feeling happier with this, you know not that goal but we still have the goal and we're changing but we can't recognize what that change may may have to, or should be maybe sometimes mm-hmm. and that's the tricky part you know and it, as you're talking about all this stuff is like I was thinking especially about the business and what we're doing and things like that and remember we went up to Wisconsin this year and, and for those who don't know I mean we told obviously everybody but we won the, the what is it rally the troops award with the most uh people racing under our triathlon club affiliation Mm -hmm. and we when we won that uh about a week before ironman wisconsin you know we were like yeah that we saw it coming and it was kind of cool and it happened and everything and then i was like man do you remember that conversation we had about a year ago when we said hey let's go up to make wisconsin our team (laughs) race i had forgotten about it but you've forgotten about it and i'd forgotten about it too but we had set this out as sort of a quote-unquote goal but then we left it to the universe after that, and we just did what we do. And we didn't harp on it or focus on it, really. You know, it started popping up towards the end, and we we're like, wow, that's really cool that we have a lot of people <clears throat> that want to race under our name. But we just kind of did the little things along the way, and it kind of materialized. But it was like you're saying, you wrote something on a paper a year ago, and you forgot about writing the deck on there or whatever, mm-hmm. and it just happened. And there's something, there's so much magic in there somewhere that. I think if we just wake up each day and just sort of, we have a goal out there, but to obsess about goals is, is, I think, you know, kind of can be counterproductive or something. Just put it. Yeah, what, what you, yeah, it's well, yeah. I think everything can be counterproductive or productive depending on what your mindset is and how you're able to, to, you know, I don't say wrestle with it, but understand that that I get again that that intentions are great but the outcome ultimately like if it's going to be decided on that very second then you know 
you you may have a direct outcome. It's something that's so far away, like you know, having the most athletes at a race or you know doing something like that. It's like the intention is there, but then you kind of wake up a year later and you're like, oh yeah, you know. I think I, I think the I think which maybe what we're both trying to say here. I don't know. You can straighten me out. Is that like you can you can talk about a goal. You can talk about a goal or something you want to accomplish, but then being about it. And being about that goal is not is no longer talking about it. It's just being about it. It's being what what it will take and doing the, the small little things and just having it in in back of mind, kind of in your unconscious by like not thinking about it, but just doing the things you normally do. And a lot of times you have these goals because you see something that you're already doing that's created a pattern that you see in the future having a positive outcome with any number of different areas in your life. And then that if you have those, then the chances – because, again, like no one can plan an outcome. You can't control an outcome. You can only do your best to see it through. But your chances of seeing it through and the chances of it ending up the way you want it to be are infinitely greater if you do all the things that you're supposed to do that are small and and might at the moment seem insignificant in putting yourself in the best situation to capture that. You know, it's like the the – the luckiest people in the world, it seems like, are always the ones that are doing things right. You know, it's like yeah. that are that the ones who have who got who get lucky in races or who have a girl, it's like they just you know, it's kinda odd. They always kinda seem to have their things their their shit together and they always seem to be doing the right things at the right time. Like luck finds people like that. And it's not luck, it's just it's preparation. You know, and and I think that that's that's one of those things you can all you should always be preparing and doing, and the rest works itself out. And, and usually, this manner of unspoken um, fulfillment that you don't even know it happens until it does, and sometimes you don't even know until after the fact. Uh, but obs- but obsessing over it only really creates you value in the obsession. It doesn't create any value in the outcome once it once it once it's accomplished. Yeah. It's that, fleeting. Mm-hmm. And that outcome is sitting out there maybe as a – your goal is sitting out there. And when you're talking about intention, what I think about intention, I think about what – am I is what I'm doing today moving me toward that goal? It doesn't have to settle the goal or, or you know, finalize any kind of thing today. But And that's where the tricky part is. Maybe you know we're talking about post-Ironman right now and I'm thinking about, well – I don't have a clear-cut goal necessarily on what a race goal is right now, but is when we come back to this happy and healthy and feeling good, and that's really a you know kind of a you know I don't know the kind of obscure goal in a way, but to be in balance, that can be my goal, right? And it's sort of weird to think about a race goal and waking up today and the best way to move toward that goal. And you've said it before, is like you, when in a race, the, the hardest thing to understand is the best way to be faster to the finish line is to slow down. Mm. And to have that in your mentality, like in training, is what's the best thing for me to reach my goal today? And that might be back off or, you know, try something fun or just like not worry about hitting an interval today, you know. And how do you reconcile that in your brain sometimes? And I think that's part of the point of like why we have these podcasts is just to throw that out there as a little reminder like somebody today is like thinking about trying to hit these crazy numbers but they're fatigued or whatever the case may be and it's okay maybe maybe you need to back down or i don't know and when you're feeling good that's the time to go for it or whatever it's mm-hmm. like, yep think about stuff like that in the long-term process because uh you know, and I've fallen trapped. I mean, it's it's easy for me to talk about this because I feel like I've made so many mistakes because, you know, it's always more is better. And if I'm going to try to do Kona, I got to keep, like, today has to be, like, prove to myself that I can even think about qualifying, you know, for Kona. <laughs> and, you know, two weeks after Ironman, I'm out there running going, you know, I've got all this fitness build and now I got to, you know, I can feel the fatigue still. So now is the time to see if I can push through it. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, what in the hell is going on with that thought process? <laughs> you know? And I get done, and that's when yeah. I have my worst run of the year. And then I'm like, all right, do I need that tough of a lesson? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, but I think that's a common thing probably in the sport is just because the nature of the beast 
is that we're you know we're pushing towards the limits and and in that case I, I, I think it's a good thing too is that you know sometimes we have to learn hard lessons yep. but learn them you know learn, learn them lessons yeah so uh, oh wow we're almost towards the end here so uh, Chattanooga swim yeah. bike run finish hard see you at the finish yeah <laughs> swim <laughs> uneventful What's the what's the motto? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, I get, well no. I'll give a quick rundown. Listen, the course is pretty simple for the swim. Uh, it it's, is a it's, but don't. It's, I was saying this. Everybody's like it's straight downstream. It's really no, not. It's there's not a little. There's some winding in there. So you know, keep close to those buoy line. That's why I always tell people because yeah. it can be deceiving. Yeah, I think again, like can we, we, I think the the course is the course. It's not a it's not a insanely technical course at all by any stretch. Uh, you know, I think we covered the most important aspect of this race, and that's what we covered earlier this week in terms of preparation with the heat and nutrition and, and expectations and execution. Uh, the course is what it is. It's a it's a downstream swim. Uh, it, it is not a straight line, but it's it's there are no turns. There are kind of curves uh or fades <laughs> into yeah, the finish fade. uh you'll have a you'll have what i would call a, a semi-long transition run you'll get up out of the water you run along the water uh on concrete and then up up some stairs or up uh, to the top of the street level and then you'll part you'll you'll find uh transition one so t1 was in a gigantic uh kind of usually what's a paid parking lot underneath the bridge and overpass uh you'll find you'll go through there you'll go through the tent you'll grab your stuff the bike course, I, I think, albeit 116 miles, I, f- I would say it is deceptively fast. Um, it is a much faster bike course than I think people realize it is, given where the straightaways are and where the inclines and declines are. It's got a few little pinchers in there, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if, if you're an experienced athlete and you've never, never done this course depending on what race you've done like yeah it's 116 miles but i would say like if you just did ironman wisconsin i would say your bike split should be faster on this course it's my uh, 15 minute pr on that course right yeah i mean it's it's, it's a dis- again it's, it's a deceptively fast course it is it is not very technical in my opinion there are long long straightaways uh, i think it's just a great bike course i think I think it'd be awesome if at some point they could actually utilize more of the terrain on the bike course. I think that'd be harder to navigate, obviously, and would cause some additional road closures and probably unhappy campers. But they cool uh, down the temps a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, just don't bring it over here towards Dayton Boulevard. I don't want that over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to throw some tax on. <laughs> don't fall on my grumpy. The my grumpy. local man coming yeah, alive. Boy. No, no, no. You, you had a pickup where, truck and have it wherever you want. Honking you know, at people all the time. Uh, yeah, try honking <laughs> the bottles. Um, listen, it's all about pacing and how you approach the run. Uh, I remember, like last year, it was hot again. The swim had been canceled. So it was a whole totally different race, and and we were all yelling at the athletes that we had racing. And it's just, I think it's always interesting to hear a coach yelling, "Slow down." Yeah. Uh, on a race course, but that's exactly what I told every single athlete running at a transition: slow down and get cool, uh, uh, because the longer you can delay the total rise of your core temp and your body temp, the better you're going to do. Yeah. And you want to speed that up again. Like you don't know how much you're sweating because you're on the bike going 18, 20. It's, it's like, it'd be like, you know, sitting there having an 18, 20 mile an hour breeze blowing your face when you're, but then you're going 18, 20 miles an hour on the bike and you get off of it. And then you run, I don't know, maybe like a quarter mile and you're just drenched. Um, you're sweating and now is the time to get cool if you haven't already started if you're just starting to stay cool on the run you're too late um, but it is all about it's all about pacing yourself don't be don't let your ego get in the way or don't let Mike's podcast like 63 when he calls walkers week um, <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what podcast it was, and he didn't say walkers a week in as many words. Um, but there will be times on this course where it, it will behoove you to to walk uh, and keep your core temp and your body temp down, your heart rate lower, because uh, it's going to be a long day. And then while there are some stretches of shade, like as you head out uh, on the greenway on the Riverwalk, 
um, and coming back in back over to Riverside. It is, um, it's a hard course. It's a hard run. Um, but I guarantee you, if you pace it well and you're able to run, if you're able to run the back half of that marathon, you're going to pass hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds of people. So no matter what decision you make, no matter what thought crosses your mind, no matter what little you know ego angel is on your shoulder telling you to push it and smash it up the facility and, and, and surge and pass these riders in front of you and make that pass, think about what's more fun, this momentary decision or running past somebody that's walking. And I'm, I'm, I make it sound like it's like some savage display of athletic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like there is, there's nothing. Just a and beat especially, I know, especially like emotionally and mentally when you need wins because you're because everything else is just suffering, everything is hurting, and you've like chafed in areas you didn't know could be chafed, and you got like saliva hanging from your chin, and you got water. It's like you, just look, you look like a mess, mm-hmm. and. You just need those wins. And so like to be able to be moving past people that are walking and moving past people while you're running and they're walking is it just it does great for your spirit, it's great for your mind, and it, I think it does great things for your body too. So if you can put yourself in that position, please make that decision to do that. Uh, Mike and I will both be on course. Uh, I'll be at the swim I'll be around race morning, I'll be definitely at the swim exit and the and then uh, bike out and then definitely all over the place on the run. Um, so if you need anything, you know, or want to just say hi, give us a high five and uh, we'll do our best to cheer you on to hopefully your most successful race to date. Yeah. I'll be out there making a video. I think I'll be wearing my gold, highly visible crushing iron shirt. That's That's hurry, hurry slowly on the back. So make sure to shout out. If you see me out there on the camera, we'll get you in the video. Hopefully. Yep. Um, Yeah. All right. That's all she wrote. It's That's, coming uh, quick. Coming quick. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe on iTunes. And a huge thank you. To, we had a couple more reviews roll in, so we always appreciate those. Those are helpful in, in uh, painting a good picture for other athletes and listeners to uh, listen into our podcast and see what they think about it and, and give them an opportunity. And it's also very helpful in growing our community that is, that is incredibly valuable. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you, you haven't lately – uh, you know, share the podcast with a friend if you really dig yeah. it. Yep. That always uh, helps. It does. And uh, I do want to read um, one of our uh, – wait, no. This was – yeah, our last review – two last reviews. Um, one was uh, from Shay959. I am Chu is my first full. This episode was very meaningful for the battle in my brain and heart center that is in full swing the insight and reevaluating expectations patience and taking care of the day gives you what's powerful thank you guys for being so genuine and authentic and then the last one was really great podcast lots of relevant insight for age group athletes i love that they have been consistent and keep it going tons to dig into so thank you rick etmt thanks rick etmt yeah etmt ABC. Uh, if you haven't, you can always hop on over to crushingiron.com. As usual, that is our one-stop shop for all things training, coaching packages, gear, some analysis, our blog, videos, camp info. It's there. Consume it. See what you like. Leave the rest. If you need anything, you can reach out to Mike directly, crushingiron at gmail.com. Or if you have questions for me, c26coach at gmail.com. It's been a pleasure, buddy. As always. Shortly. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye